Welcome to the 35th edition of the Rally de Wallonie, the fourth round of the Job Fixes Belgian Rally Championship. We're in Amur on the borders of the River Meuse. And as always, the Rally de Wallonie starts with two spectacular show stages on the Citadel on Friday evening. In these two short stages, it is impossible to win the rally. But as many of the drivers know, it is very much possible to lose it. Here's Jonas Jangelak as one of the classic Group N drivers, immediately leading his category. This is the big favourite, Vincent Verschuren. In absence of championship leader, Chris Prinsen. Prinsen is not here because only six rounds count towards the championship and Prinsen has chosen to let this one go. So this is Verschuren's chance to take his first win of the year. He will have to beat Cedric Chirin, though, the 2015 winner of the Rally de Wallonie. And there's also Adrian Furnimont, the winner of the Spa Rally earlier this year. Avec de rear mur, c'est gauche, 70, pas corde, attention, bordure. Et 70 serait à droite et derrière tour, gauche, 70, dur, pas corde. Furnimont leads after the first two stages. A bit of a scare there for Sebastian Bedoret. Second in the Junior Championship last year, and Etienne Montfort, also in the Skoda R5, has a bit of a scare as well. But there's only some body damage to his Skoda. So Furnamon leading after the first two stages, Chirin in second, then Verschuren, Bush in fourth, and Bonjean in fifth. First full day then, three loops of four stages and we start off with a long one, 24 kilometers. But the differences between the cars are very small. Yes, it's always like that in the Wallonie. If you have uh, similar cars and you put good drivers in them, the differences will uh, will be small. But then again, when, uh, when the rain comes, uh, things might change. The long stage, 24 kilometers, immediately the chance for some drivers to make a difference. And Vincent Verschuren does exactly that. He takes the lead of the rally. Yeah, these stages uh, ask a lot of the driver and, and of the car. But it's very fun to do. After uh, some 20 kilometers, everything becomes hot and you have to adapt uh, a certain style to cope with those uh, circumstances. Problems then for leader Adrian Furnimont. He misses his breaking point and he goes off into a field. Fortunately, without much damage to his Skoda. But some 10, 12 seconds are lost. He manages to get out of the difficult situation. Yeah, we go off into a field. Uh, fortunately, there were no, no nothing to hit, but uh, that calmed us a bit. And fortunately, otherwise, that rally could have been over right there. Xavier Bouge is one of those uh, Wallonie specialists. It's his 21st participation here. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> yeah, you just told me then. Yeah, I like this rally a lot and I think I've done almost every stage here, apart the one from Moheville this year because it has a different start than the other years, so that's new to me as well. The Job Fixes team is present as well with Achille Boxoon in the Ford Fiesta, but he has a difficult start of the day. He'll have seen what exactly happened in the first stage. Uh, we made a small mistake at the end. Uh, the tyres were still a bit cold. And uh, yeah, we, we were just a bit too fast. We went off. I think we lost some 15 to 20 seconds, but uh, we were able to, to restart. More problems there for this Skoda driver. Steve Materna has had a hell of a morning. Steve, this was a very difficult morning. Yeah, first stage we spun, we lost some time. Second stage we had a puncture and we spun again. And on the third one uh, we went off into a field. Um, nothing to the car, but uh, again some time loss. Vincent Verschuren leading after that first loop of four stages on the Saturday. 
and in fourth is this man, Olivier Collard, former Super 1600 Belgian champion in his first R5 rally. We were very careful in the two short stages on Friday evening. And here in the, the stage this morning, we lost a couple of only a couple of seconds, and again in the next one. So I think we had a good start of the day. Manu Canal Robles also driving Skoda Fabia, but as you can see, it's not the R5 version, but the slightly older WRC version. He's in fifth overall. Yeah, we hope for a bit better. Uh, we made a small mistake this morning. Was, um, I needed some rhythm as well because I didn't turn too many rallies. Unfortunately, when I wanted to attack, uh, I immediately had a, had a puncture. So um, we lost some time, some 10 seconds there. But uh, the rally is far from over. I think we can still manage to, uh, to gain some places here. Sebastian Bedouet had a careful start to the rally, but then he picks up the pace and he's in sixth overall after the first loop of four stages. We slightly changed the setup of the car. So we, now we have more confidence in the car and, and it goes uh, a lot better now. You really like this rally, don't you? Yeah, almost like every rally in Belgium here. It's a uh, nice stages here. So we have to we can attack a bit here. It goes fast as well. Patrick Snares is leading the GT category in his Porsche. Snares is back after a very heavy crash in the previous round in Tilt. But now he's in eight overall. Patrick Snares look a bit strong. Patrick, you know, still a bit stiff apparently. Yeah, exactly. After that crash in Tilt that's three weeks ago now. Yeah, but uh, I was really hurt and the muscles in my, my lower back and, and, and my stomach. So um, I had some difficulties to get in and out of the car, yes. It's not the age. No, no, not really, even though I, I walked around like an old man for a while, but uh, it really hurt. Yep. Leading the historic category is Paul Alita with his Opel Manta 400. Lita is the only survivor after a couple of stages because all the others fell by the wayside. So Lita is dominating that category, obviously. Off to the second loop of four stages, four identical stages. Another chance for the drivers to show their speed. Among them, Philip Krakow. Philip, the Rally de Wallonie, it's a difficult rally, isn't it? It's very difficult, it's a very beautiful rally, but it's a, especially a very, very, very fast rally as well. How is it going for the moment? All times are good for my... Uh, I'm, I'm a gentleman driver, don't forget. But this morning we had a bit of too soft a suspension, but now we've changed it, so everything is, is going better now. Do you look at your younger teammates' times? Yes, obviously, yes. Uh, I look at uh, Peter Jan-Michiel and Achiel. They're having a nice fight uh, for the moment. Are you happy with, with the team? Yeah, very happy. They're, they're doing very good at the moment. They're really fighting hard for, for... It's very nice to look at. Peter Jan-Michiel, Krakow then, is trying to get into the top 10. We have a new parkour is up and now... Yeah, we, we learned the stages in the morning and now we're getting more confidence and where we can attack, we will attack. Guillaume de Mevius had a difficult start to the rally. Yeah, we have to change the setup a bit, it wasn't completely to my liking. And then we had a small engine problem as well, he doesn't didn't give the power that we needed. So yesterday evening I made a little mistake as well, so we have to correct some things. But then this happened to Guillaume de Mevius and Louis Luca. Another heavy crash and it was the end of his rally. Vincent Verschuren, meanwhile, keeps on the speed, takes some stage wins, and after 10 stages, he's leading with 7 seconds in hand. A 
Uh, Resort loopt lekker, denk ik. Well, so it's going well, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we can't complain. We have a small advantage, but yes, seven seconds, that's uh, nothing really. Now we have to uh, to control the tires. To we have to look at the tires to see that we if, that we have the necessary tires for tomorrow. Because that might be crucial. Yeah, because if it rains tomorrow, those sevens really mean nothing. Everything can change now. Cedric Chirin trying to keep up with Verschuren, but he's gradually losing ground. He might hope for rain on the final day then. Uh, it's far from over, is it? The weather conditions tomorrow will be very difficult. I'm going to do a rain dance tomorrow, so it will be very wet. And Adrian Furnemann will probably join him. He's still in third, but he's now 18 seconds behind Verschuren. Yeah, I'll lose some time here uh, in this loop. I'll lose four seconds in that stage. But it's very strange because in the next one I drive exactly the same and there uh, I'll take the fastest time. Okay, I only gain two tenths of a second, so I don't get too much closer by that. But we have to keep fighting. Olivier Collard still in fourth with his Skoda R5. And here's Dutchman Edwin Schild reunited with uh, co-driver Lisette Bakker. Yeah, it's, uh, I think our last ride together was, was some eight months ago, so uh, now we're just back in the car, no shakedown, no nothing. To, so here we are, ready to drive. Patrick Snyder is still leading the GT category, and he was the first winner in the Wallonie in 1984. You've won here before, 35 years ago. Yeah, you make me sound very old, don't you? Yeah, exactly. That's the case. But and now we're, we're still in the in the top ten. First of the GT cars. We've lost some time on the Citadel yesterday evening because of because of the gravel. That was not really to our advantage. We've started in 18th position this morning, and now we're in eighth. So um, it's it's impossible to fight against the R5 though. But I'm I'm happy. The final loop of four stages then, the last chance for Adrian Furnemont to get some closer to the leader on this first day. Furnemont loses some more time and he ends the day in third, some 20 seconds behind the leader. Chirin tries to edge closer, but to no avail, he remains stuck seven seconds behind the leader and that leader is still Vincent Verschuren. Seven and a half seconds he has to compete over the final eight stages of the final day. You don't have an Evo engine in there. Is that difference? Yeah, I'm not worried. It's, it's not an advantage, is it? It's a bit frustrating because uh, we try to do our uh, our best and try where it can get. It's very close in front, yeah, very close indeed, yeah, but we're happy where we are. Sebastian Bederet climbs to fifth after some nice stage times at the end of the day. Xavier Bush gets a penalty and a bit later he leaves the rally as well and Peter Jan Krakow gets into the top ten. Yeah, it's very tricky, it's it's very slippery and even places where I knew it was slippery, it's even more slippery than I thought. So we, we had a one straight, but for the moment it's good. So these are the standings at the end of the first full day. Verschuren leading from Chirin, then Fernemont, Collar in fourth and Sebastian Bedere in fifth. And that's the end of part one of our report on the Rally de Wallonie, the fourth round of the Job Fixers Belgian Rally Championship. See you after the break.
Back in the well, need the fourth round of the job fixes BRC, in which safety plays an important part. Adrian Fernemont pour le futur. Adrian Fernemont for the future of the rally. Safety is of a paramount importance, isn't it? It's of course it is safety is, is especially on the road sections. We didn't we cannot pass the speed limits on the on the road sections. We have to be very careful. On the stages we can go as fast as we want, but not on the on the road sections. It's a verschuren for the future of the rally. Safety is, is very important, isn't it? on the road sections as well yes of course it's very important to 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 respect uh, the code and the rules if you see how many spectators there are here it's even more dangerous than usual the the normal traffic so you have to be very careful final day of the rally the wallonie then eight more stages two loops of four stages and as you can see it started to rain and some drivers are really happy about that Manu Canarobles had a good start to the rally, but then some gearbox problems meant the end of his rally. Elio Fournemont shocks everybody because he takes the four fastest times in the first loop. Yeah, I know these stages very well and with our Pirelli tires, I think they're more adapted to these conditions. So we now have four stages, four stage wins, and now we have to do it again on the, on the final loop. Uh, I think we can do something, but uh, we have to stay calm. Cedric Charan drops to third though, but he's only six seconds behind the leader still. It's incredible, isn't it? It reminds me of 2015 when I was fighting with uh, with Freddy. I uh, hope this one gets decided before the last stage, but now with three drivers within six seconds. And I think um, with, uh, with a nice loop, uh, Adrian did a good loop here. But if it's still that close at the end, I think it will be a spectacular finish. Vincent Verschuren is still leading, but he only has four seconds in hand now over uh, Adrian Fernemont. Four stages to go. The first stage was, uh, was not good for us. It was very wet. Then was good for the rain tyres, but the first stage was very wet. That was good for the, for the rain ties, but the, the next three ones were, wasn't really adapted. Now I think we have to go to, uh, to cut slicks. For the for the final loop here because um, the the rain tire we have the Michelin rain tire is only good when it's really wet and that is not the case at the moment. Pololita on the other hand has no problems. He wins the round of the Belgian Historic Rally Championship. In the Pirelli Junior Rally Championship, Jean Dillet had some good times, but a puncture means he finishes in third. He's the new championship leader, though. Tobias Bruls had some good times as well with his Persia 208, and Bruls eventually finishes up in second among the juniors. But the win goes to Gregoire Munster in his Opel Adam, dominating the event. Gregoire Munster, the second overwinning. Gregoire Munster, your second win in the Pirelli Junior Championship. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a very nice to win a second time. It's very important for the championship as well, and uh, bides well for the future. It was a very close fight, especially at the beginning with Romain Delay, who was going very fast as well. Yes, indeed, he he, he had a good rhythm from the start. And uh, we had to fight for every second, but then unfortunately uh, he went off the road. Uh, I don't know the circumstances or what happened there. Another spectacular drive from uh, Stefan Hermann in his two-wheel drive Fiat Punto. Stefan Hermann, es geht, uh, Stefan Hermann uh, it was going very well. Yeah, it went very well indeed. Yeah, yesterday was a good day already. Yeah, I know, don't know the car very well, but uh, we're happy about it. Olivier Cartel was second in the GT category, but he was really no competition for the man who dominated the GT category. 
That was this man, Patrick Snares, again. And Snares would eventually finish in sixth overall. And best of the GT category. It's a pity that there wasn't too much competition. Yes, indeed, there was a lot of competition in tilts, but then then I made my mistake. So yes, indeed, uh, we tried to go as uh, fast as possible, and winning the category was the best thing we can do. Sebastian Bedere in his second rally with the Skoda R5. The first one he finished on the podium, and now he finishes in fifth. A good result as well. It brings him into the top five in the championship. Olivier Collard in his very first rally with an R5 car. Finishes in fourth. Good rally for the experienced driver. Adrian Furnamore did not have intermediate tyres for the final loop. He had to do it in rain tyres. But as you can see, it remained dry. And that meant that Furnamore lost the time that he gained in the morning. Furthermore, ended up in third, making room for Cedric Charin, who fought hard to try and close the gap towards Vincent Verschuren, but eventually he had to settle for a second. So it's the first win of the year for reigning champion Vincent Verschuren. A very important win that brings him back into the fight for the title with uh, Chris Princeton. Mr. Congratulations, it was exciting until the final meters. Yes, indeed, a uh, small mistake in the final stage. A bit lucky, but you need luck to, to win here. So we're happy we, we took this win. And it's very important for the championship as well. Yes, indeed, it's very important for me because I needed to win. Chris already had... Um, Two wins, so I needed to win to get closer. Next round is Bocholt now, and we'll be fighting against each other again. So the biggest cup for Vincent Verschuren with Cedric Chirin in second, Adrian Furnamont in third, Olivier Collard in fourth, and Sebastian Bedouet in fifth. In the championship, Chris Princeton is still leading with four points ahead of Verschuren. Furnamont in third, Snees climbs to fourth and equal points with Sebastian Bedore. So it's celebrations for Vincent Verschuren and co-driver Veronique Hostens. The next round is the Sazoon's Rally. See you then. <laughs>